just when you think the Liberal Party could not melt down any further. Yeah, lots of really interesting big names being thrown around today by the Prime Minister. Today, a report from the Globe and Mail. Today, breaking news out of Ottawa shows a Liberal Party in extreme disarray. To do something to shake things up, turn their fortunes around. That Trudeau advisors are apparently questioning her abilities as an effective communicator. At Christia Freeland's position as finance minister could be on the table. Christia Freeland, also the finance minister, is one of the highest profile members of Team Trudeau. Uh, once again, it's Justin Trudeau's fault. The relationship between her office and Justin Trudeau's office has become tense. The backstabbing and, and crazy things are happening within his pocket. So there's, there's big stories happening. Canada's Deputy Prime Minister, Chrystia Freeland, also the Finance Minister, is one of the highest profile members of Team Trudeau. She routinely travels the country, giving news conferences and trying to hype the government's record, especially nowadays amid very polling numbers. But today, a report from the Globe and Mail that her future could be in doubt, that Trudeau advisors are apparently questioning her abilities as an effective communicator. Tension rises between Freeland PMO over economic messaging, low approval ratings. And guys, this article is something else. And the newspaper also saying the relationship between her office and Justin Trudeau's office has become tense, leading to speculation about the possibility of Mark Carney, former Bank of Canada governor, jumping into politics. Who knows? In it, Justin Trudeau, an anonymous source, which of, of course it's somebody from Justin Trudeau's PMO. There's nobody that would go to Bob Fife with this type of knowledge if it wasn't an approved leak. So just to be very clear, right? Somebody went and, ba and threw Christia Freeland under the bus, basically blamed her, said, well, you know, Justin Trudeau is looking to replace her with Mark Carney, carbon tax Mark Carney, um, because it's her communications fault that the that the polling is so low. It's it's because she can't communicate. That's that's why the liberals are doing so badly. Bring us up to speed here on what this means here and what it doesn't mean. And and this ongoing discussion about Mark Carney being this savior to come in and help save the liberal party from political oblivion. Yeah, lots of really interesting big names being thrown around today by the Prime Minister, hitting right on this speculation that we've been covering for months about both the state of the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau, potential successors to him, Mark Carney, clearly Todd, being one of the names that keeps getting bandied about. He keeps throwing cold water on it. So today, kind of to bring viewers back to how we got here. There has been pressure on the Prime Minister since that ill-fated by-election late last month to do something to shake things up, turn their fortunes around. And if he's going to stay as Prime Minister, the speculation, Todd, has shifted to what he needs to do within his inner circle, within his front bench of cabinet ministers, to try to show worried liberals that they can turn things around. Okay, so wh why is he doing this? Wh why would he do this today? Yeah, we do have uh, that comment, actually, that Trudeau said at a news conference in Washington today as part of the larger NATO summit when he was asked about this. And let's play that and, and get a sense of exactly what Trudeau said here. Prime Minister, did you and your staff discuss the possibility of replacing Christia Freeland as finance minister with Mark Carney? And did you raise uh, the, this issue with Mr. Carney personally? En français aussi. I have been talking with Mark Carney for years now about getting him to join federal politics. I think he would be uh, an outstanding addition at a time when uh, Canadians need good people to step up in politics. Um, in regards to Christia, she has been a close friend and ally and partner in doing really big things for Canada and will continue to be delivering the largest housing and most ambitious housing program in Canada's history, delivering on child care, transforming our economy to be ready for the 21st century. These are all things that Christia has led on and will continue to. I have full confidence uh, in her abilities and on the work we're going to be doing together. So like Freeland or not, have you seen this movie before? I sure have. What does Justin Trudeau do every time he gets in trouble? He does what? He throws one of his female cabinet ministers under the bus. Prime Minister, did you and your staff discuss the possibility of replacing Christia Freeland as finance minister with Mark Carney? And did you raise uh, the, this issue with Mr. Carney personally? En français aussi. I have been talking with Mark Carney for years now about getting him to join federal politics. I think he would be uh, an outstanding addition at a time when uh, Canadians need good people to step up in politics. Um, in regards to Christia, 
she has been a close friend and ally and partner in doing really big things for Canada and will continue to be. Delivering the largest housing and most ambitious housing program in Canada's history, delivering on childcare, transforming our economy to be ready for the 21st century. These are all things that Christia has led on and will continue to. I have full confidence uh, in her abilities and on the work we're going to be doing together. On this is twofold, Todd. Clearly, I think it is not necessarily a shocking revelation that the Prime Minister has been talking to Mark Carney, a longtime Liberal, about a role he could play. So first of all, um, he, he talks about how, and then there was a later article today explaining this further in the Globe and Mail, that he's trying to recruit Mark Carney to be his finance minister. So Freeland's out, Carney, he wants Carney to be in. Um, uh, so, so Mark Carney has been circling around Trudeau's bloated uh, carcass of a political career like a turkey vulture for the last several months. Now, I think the more like political analysis we can impose on this comment, Todd, is what is behind the scenes here? There has been some suggestions that uh, from liberals that if Mark Carney wants to get into the race and be a serious contender, uh, either to join the Liberal Party in some capacity or potentially as prime minister, he has to kind of pay his dues and kind of get in the trenches and do the campaigning and get in there. So potentially coming in to help the government at this time try to sell their economic message, a message they are kind of losing voters on in contrast to the Conservatives, could be a way for him to pay those dues. So he needed a way to clip Mark Carney's wings. And what better way to do that than to offer him the finance minister role where he could carry the same water that Christia Freeland has been doing, like basically holding the bag for all of Justin Trudeau's junky policies. But there are others that have suggested he should stay as far away from this current Liberal government as possible uh, to kind of improve his chances in the future. If he does want to run, not having been painted with the current Liberal government's brush could be to his advantage. The thing is, if Mark Carney doesn't take this job, then it's like, oh, well, he's not loyal to the cause. So either way, this is not good for Mark Carney. Um, I find it amusing if it wasn't for the fact that this type of junk is deeply, um, it leads to huge instability. Like who wants to invest in Canada when the prime minister is doing sort of this sort of junk with his finance minister, right? It's insane. So the other thing that, um, the other reason that he's doing this is he needs what? He needs a scapegoat. And you know, that I guess that's Christia Freeland. Uh, Christia Freeland, like, has been one of his most loyal foot soldiers, I, I think stupidly carrying his water for nearly a decade. Well, politics can be ruthless, as we all know, but dumping Christia Freeland for Mark Carney would be perhaps particularly ruthless, uh, to say nothing of the fact that the Conservatives are probably already preparing attack ads about how Mark Carney is an elitist and a globalist and he ran the Bank of England and he's totally out of touch with average Canadians. I can, I can almost imagine it right now. Yeah, I think what's really important here is that there's no imminent cabinet shuffle, but certainly any of these conversations about moving a piece here or there is something the Prime Minister's office spends a lot of time thinking about in advance. There's little minutiae details about maintaining that gender parity, but also regional representation. And certainly I think this Prime Minister would be mindful of not wanting to face the criticism of demoting the most senior woman in his cabinet completely. So would that be she keeps one of the roles and drops finance days as deputy, or, or how do they kind of spin this, if this is something they're going to do, uh, those are all going to have to be key considerations because it shouldn't be a situation uh, where the overall image Canadians are getting, Todd, is that the prime minister is throwing someone else under the bus so he can keep going on. So what he's trying to do here is build a narrative that it's Christia Freeland's fault that they lost the by-election. It's Christia Freeland's fault. And you know what's really disgusting about all of this is that he went out and smeared her right, through these anonymous sources, just like he did with these other women, without any chance for her to respond. So like Christia Freeland or not, like, I don't think she's a great finance minister, putting it mildly, but for Justin Trudeau to try and pin the blame of his failures on a woman like that, oh, that's pretty gross, right? Yeah, and, and you raised a great point, too, that I just want to touch on before we go, which is the idea that let's say you are Mark Carney and you're interested maybe getting into politics. Why would you come now when the polls are so bad for the Liberal government, why not wait until, let's say, a theoretical defeat for them, and then they have to find a new leader, and then you step in as the Liberal Messiah. 
these are probably conversations anyone who would be eyeing a liberal leadership run right now are weighing. You do have to kind of factor in, is your loyalty to the party and feeling very strongly about making sure you show the strongest defense against the conservatives in the next election, does that kind of altruism supersede your own personal ambitions? Uh, that is a question uh, I don't have the answer to, Todd, but it's really going to be fascinating over the next couple months as we see as this plays out, because if the prime minister is having these conversations, kind of naming Carney directly in a conversation that we've all kind of been chatting about but not hearing him address head on. Uh, so that really struck me today as interesting. And certainly there seems to be uh, some interesting conversations happening behind the scenes. And I look forward to uh, watching how they all play out in the next couple weeks or yeah. months ahead of Parliament coming back in September. I love talking politics with you, Rachel. Thanks for this today. Yeah, me too, Todd. Anytime. Rachel Aiello, CTV National Correspondent in Ottawa.